We're Sid and Mackie, and we're professional mountain bikers on a quest to race the best and most challenging mountain bike races around the world. Last week, you joined us as we flew to Chile to start preparing for the Trans Andes Challenge, a five-day stage race in southern Chile. When we planned this trip, we intentionally left a little early so that we could spend a week in Chile's lakes region and get a little bit of a vacation in before what is surely going to be a tough race. Welcome to summer. You know, relax, enjoy our favorite Chilean delicacies, pick blackberries, lounge on the beach. I don't have summer clothes if we're really just this white. And get some much needed vitamin D. Wait. By now, you should know us much better than that. We actually came here to ride 50 miles around a volcano. This volcano, in fact. This story actually starts 11 years ago. Okay, ready? In 2012, when we came to this part of the world on our first ever trip together. We were 20 and 23 respectively. At this point, we had been dating for six months and this trip was, in hindsight, a disaster from start to finish. Mackie's passport was stolen, we ran our rental car out of gas in the middle of nowhere, we got a flat tire also in the middle of nowhere, and somewhere in the middle of all this, we thought it was a good idea to do a 50 mile mountain bike race around a volcano. This race, Conquista Volcana Sorno, is still running to this day. And while I think I would enjoy it a lot now, in 2012, I was wildly unprepared. Our pre-ride was the longest ride I had ever done at this point, and of course we ran out of food and water, got eaten alive by gargantuan black flies, and I suffered the worst bonk of my entire life. All told, it took us nine hours, and we were miserable. If you've learned anything from our channel, it's that we are drawn back to things that were terrible the first time around. But this time around, I think it's going to go a lot better. Wow. Wow, insane. Oh, how is this real life? Wow, that's insane. Woo! Okay, we're off on an adventure. Volcano well, Sorno is an 8,500 foot peak and it is an active stratovolcano. That said, the danger of an eruption while we're riding around it today is effectively zero. While the area briefly went into a yellow alert in 2018 due to seismic activity on the volcano, there hasn't been an eruption since 1869. Bacana Sorno was so named by Spanish conquistadores because it's visible from the town of Osorno, but the Mapuche who originally inhabited the area called it Pirepillan after the demon who, legend told, gave rise to the volcano after being banished from the heavens. We're starting our ride in Las Cascadas, where we'll arrive paved road for a few kilometers before starting a long gravel climb up to Parque Nacional Vicente Perez Rosales, where we'll get on single track and cross over the saddle and down into Petrohe. From there, we'll get on a trail called Solitario and cross over a large lava field before getting back on pavement and completing the loop. Rio Blanco and La Picada. How pretty is this? With all those dandelion flowers. Sid and I were just saying that we would not have necessarily like thought of this as the race course, just trying to remember what it was like. But then now that I'm here or we're here, it's like, oh yeah, I vague, like I remember this. Maybe not like this exact thing, but I remember the feel of like lots of green on the sides and this road and I drove you up this road when you did it the second time. Yeah drove me up, or you drove down, right. despite not being able to drive stick at the time. Yeah. Really just like fits in the game with 2012, so being very game, both very inept. <laughs> Unprepared, but game. I honestly don't know how I made it back. I don't remember where I met you. I guess I just blocked that. What I remember is when we connected again, you telling me that you had really struggled to get going, and it turned out it was because the parking brake was still on.
Looks like we go straight here. Quick gummy bear break. Salty gummy bears. Well, this is kind of crazy. We're in a fern tunnel. Parque Nacional. Okay. A split in the road. No, not really, huh? I'm trying to keep up with you here. <laughs> now there seems to be some sort of man-made something or other up here. Buen dia. Hola, hola. Hola, hola. Van a cruzar hola. para allá. Hola. Sí. Hola, hola. Van a cruzar a Pechogüe. Sí. sí. Vamos ah. al otro lado y hacer la vuelta del volcán. Ah, ya, como el CBO. Una sí, sí, exactamente. ¿Por escribir ahí su, ¿Sí? su nombre? Sí. Chuls. Sí. sí. Ah, mire. Muchos chuls acá en la zona. Claro. Ah, sí. Sí, ah, acá sí. en la zona hay chuls. Sí. Alemanes. Sí. Por eso los coge. Ok, brief pause for a history lesson in case this interaction is making you scratch your head. This part of Chile was actually colonized by a large number of German immigrants in the 1800s as part of a state-led colonization scheme. The Chilean government sent ambassadors to Germany after the German revolutions in 1848 to recruit settlers. To this day, there is still quite a bit of German influence in the area, including German schools, a hybrid language, last names like Mind, and, of course, Kuhen, which we're going to talk about more later. Me voy a tomar una fotito. ¿Puedo tomar sí, una foto? Sí, claro. <laughs> Arriba. A subir. <laughs> a subir. <laughs> Chao. Hasta Cuídate. luego. Gracias. Gracias. Que lleguen bien. Gracias. Hasta luego. All right, here we are. Nope, maybe not. I'm confused. I think we go around it. Yeah. I definitely don't remember this. Based on the map, we have 13 switchbacks. Yeah, that right there is a volcano. Look at all this lava to our right. You can tell it flowed. That's really cool. Oh. <laughs> How do we get up there? Or do we get up there? Okay, I don't know what the deal with this river is, but it literally looks like chocolate milk. Wow. Assuming this way? Any idea where we're supposed to be going? <laughs> um, left. Okay. Oh, the Chocolate River. This does seem to be the way we want to go. Wow. We made it, guys. There is Volcano Sorno. Back that way is the way we came from. And that way is the way we're going. It's really, really cool up here. It's also very much lunchtime. What if it erupted? <laughs> what if it erupted? That, <laughs> that would be something. Like right now. Mm hmm. We have to assess which way we're going. Yeah. I mean, I think the short answer is we'd be in big trouble. <laughs> but it's not even smoking, so I think we're good. Wow, insane.
Unless we're looking at it, what is solid and what is sand. Wow, that's wild. Look at this lake. <laughs> oh, how is this real life? How is this real life? It is stunning. Where's the trail? It's over here. Okay. There's a lot of different lines, hard to know which one to take. Wow. I think it, this just loops back down to the left there. I so. think there's a line on that whole ridge line. Cool. But I don't, it may be not rideable. I'm down. You go first. Me first? Yeah. I probably won't take that line though. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm having can't get out of my foot if cleat issues. This is correct to the right. There's a hole in there somewhere. Better luck than me. Oh. oh. Can you get my bike for me? Yeah. You have the bike. Thanks. I was hoping to avoid that, but I was unsuccessful. Watch your phone. Oh. Where is it? In the river. How's it doing? It's fine, I think. Okay. No, I'm just embarrassed. It's okay. I don't like falling over. <laughs> oh well. How wet are you? Huh? How wet are oh, you? I'm fairly wet. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, I think I need to lube my pedals as well. Well, that is a good reminder to me that I need to lube the cleats and pedal surfaces, clip surfaces on these pedals because after a while of super dry conditions they uh they tend to get a little sticky this is kind of crazy a little cycle cross moment
Sand pits, sand pits. Careful of the chain. Wow, so pretty. And there's a lot of human beings. All right. Man, that's pretty right there. This little inlet or bay, I guess. Three hours and 33 minutes. Including lunch break. Including, well, I paused mine for lunch, but I think lunch was like maybe 10 minutes, so. So maybe 345. We have climbed 3,800 feet. We have descended 3,500 feet. And we've ridden 27 miles. And we've decided that we are in fact going to ride Solitario. This is the part that really just broke me the last time we did this. Actually, the whole thing was pretty rough, but they've since removed this section from the race. Which, oh boy. Too many broken people, probably. Okay. Come on. This is a wall. Not gonna make it. Anyway, it's very sandy. And a lot of it is uphill sandy. This isn't sandy yet. This was just uphill. There's one really open section that I remember just feeling like I've been left for dead there. Ah, uh, here starts the sand. Sand is savage. Locked out or not locked out? Sorry. Not your fault. Can I help you? No. <laughs> so try not to laugh. Try not to laugh. Uh. <laughs> All better? I'm fine, thank you. <laughs> this is the part that I remember from when we rode this in 2012. Because it is desolate out here in the shadow of the volcano. Feels like something out of Lord of the Rings. And I just remember feeling like I had been left behind. Naki doesn't usually leave me behind though, so probably he was just hiding. Because I was grumpy. It's pretty cool though, all things considered. Now we roll down this road and then ride back the road. So now we have about 16 kilometers probably on the road, but it has this nice little ciclovia most of the way. Wow. Wow. <laughs> We've decided we need an empanada stop. Hola. Hola. Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Hay que dar empanadas de queso. Sí. Ah, y bueno. también de carne. Sí, igual. Por favor, una, una de una cada una. Una, cada una. una de carne y una de queso. Entonces. Got our empanadas and we got a piece of kuchen and some water. This is kuchen, which I think just is cake in German, but here in this part of Chile, it seems to usually be this kind of very specific sort of tart thing with like maybe fruit. And the custard. We got a strusly one. The bustling metropolis of Las Cascadas. Well, that's the gate. I guess that means we did it. In the end, this ride was as spectacular as we remembered and so much better with our current fitness. 
Despite our casual pace, we still finished about a half hour faster than Sid's 2012 race time, and we had a lot more fun. Now it's time to load up the truck and get ready for Trans Andes. But first, we've got to pick up some special guests, and that's next week's video.